everyone, welcome back to another vlog. I hope you're all okay, staying safe, staying well in the COVID-19 crisis. I'm trying to keep positive, which is why I'm still smiling, because if I don't, I'm gonna cry. This week is week two of lockdown. So last week we started to put in more extreme sort of measures and the distancing and the staff rooms and things like that. So this week we have been clearing the rooms. We have been clearing anything that is not wipeable, anything that doesn't need to be there, getting the rooms ready so that when we start having COVID positive patients or people that are suspected and things like that, we need to be able to manage the whole room. Every single surface needs to be deep cleaned every after every single patient and all of that so we've been removing leaflets we've been re removing um paper from the walls we've been removing things like fans because we can't use fans um in a situation like this weighing scales because weighing someone is the least of our worries right now we've we're waiting for more ppe to be delivered so we've got enough We've been really, really fortunate that a school locally donated some science goggles to us. So we've got some eye protection, we've got the masks, we've got the gloves, we've got aprons, and we are just waiting for more PP. basically. It is on order, it is on its way, but yeah, there is numbers and email addresses and stuff like that to order your PPE out there from the government. So have a look if you need to. But I really, really feel like our surgery has done amazing. Like we have done everything we possibly can. The management, the CCGs, I said this in my last video, have been fantastic with everything. I really feel like we're on the ball with it. We're really well prepared and we're doing everything we can to manage the situation. And at the minute, we are very, very quiet. But I think it is the calm before the storm. That's how it feels. It feels like we're preparing and that's what we've been told as well from the head above you know the nurses have to be well rested right now so in between our patients we've got big gaps um to make sure that we're doing everything properly make sure that we're preparing the clinics for the worst case possible situation we're waiting for a lot of things to happen right now so what have I been doing in the meantime? So I've been having like three patients a day and I've got big blocks in between, but this is not to be mistaken for I'm not busy not doing stuff and I'm not going to be doing stuff in the future because I am. <laughs> we are going to be seeing the COVID positive patients. We're going to be seeing suspected. We're going to be seeing dealing the symptoms. Anybody that can't get physically into the hospital, anyone that's been going to the hospital or any anyone that's sort of got COVID symptoms that aren't being managed in the hospital, they have to be managed at home. They have to be managed out there in the community. So we are going to be very, very busy because there's going to be a lot, a lot of cases in the community that can't physically get to hospital. There's going to be end of life patients, but they're preparing for the absolute worst because they have to. And they're going to have to make tough decisions. Um, and I shared a post on my Facebook, I think it was last week, um, not Facebook, Instagram, actually I did share it on Facebook as well, I think, Twitter and Instagram about the ethics around this because I was, the first thing I thought when I heard that the decision's going to be made that they're not going to treat everybody, that they're just going to treat the people with a chance of survival, I thought, where's the ethics in that? That's really, really harsh because me as a person, I want to treat everybody. That's bloody awful and ugh, I can't even imagine it. Don't, I'm going to get emotional. Um, so I wanted to look into the ethics about it. And that's where our role as a GP nurse, as community nurses, is going to fall. We're going to be managing the symptoms of those people at home. And it's going to be, oh, it's not going to be nice. I know it's not going to be nice. <sighs> But you know what, I've always said in previous vlogs, when I've had my community placements, whenever I've been on a ward and I've had to deal with palliative patients and end of life patients, I feel like that's an honour. I feel like it's such an honour because that's the last piece of care you're giving to someone whilst they're alive or at the end of their life or after they've passed when you're doing the last offices. I, f I feel like it's such a privilege and honour to do that for someone and I always give my best and that's the way I've always thought of end of life and that's the way I will be thinking of this. God, sorry guys, I'm a mess. But it's awful, it's awful that it, it's come to that, that it's going to come to that, that people are going to die and we're not going to be able to stop it. And people are dying. I mean, look at the stats already. There's so many people that have died. But when this peak hits that they keep talking about, that's all I keep thinking about. And it's times like this that 
COVID compassion is needed. And that's what I'm calling this. My friend Kenny, who's on Twitter, if you don't know him on Twitter, go and follow him. He's amazing. Um, he kicks off the Early Risers Club for us and he does a lot on safeguarding. There's a safeguarding app and all of that. NHS safeguarding app, have a look at it, need it, want it, do it. Um, but yeah, he said to me on, because I was feeling, actually, I didn't say this to them, but I was feeling a bit low about things. I was think I was feeling like, because I only have three patients a day at the minute, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. I don't feel like I could, I could feel like that I'm doing more for people and I'm not doing that at the minute. And that's how I've been feeling this past week. But he said something on that video call that we had. We had an Early Risers Club video call. And he said, you know what? You've got the COVID compassion. And that's what's really, really needed right now. It's not all about nursing clinical skills and ventilation and all of that. It's about compassion because people are going to be anxious. They're going to be terrified. And you have that compassion that you can bring to patients. And I just thought it was so lovely. And I'm trying to get the hashtag going now, COVID compassion. So come on, when you hashtag things, hashtag COVID compassion because I just thought it was just so lovely and nice. And I thought, you know what, he's right. And actually the next day when I went into work, I um, started phoning patients. No one's told me to do that. I've just done that because I think, you know what, I need to start ringing patients. I need to start saying to patients, are you okay? Do you need any support at home? Things like that. I mean, I had a lady who hadn't had her hair done in two weeks and I, I just said to her, do you know what, there's a, a lot worse things right now in the world than this little thing but I know how awful it must feel not to have your hair washed that like those little things are going to get you down and so I offered her a little solution she did have a family member that could go out and get her shopping and things like that for her so I said try some dry shampoo I said I've tried you know there's days where I haven't washed my hair I've got some dry shampoo I give it a spray and my hair looks amazing and bright as new I said so get whoever can go out for you to get you some dry shampoo and give it a go and see if that works and she was actually really chuffed with that suggestion she was like oh that's a really good idea yes I'm gonna try that and she's actually really happy with that so I helped her in that sort of way and that was actually really really nice to do that and I think though these hours that I'm using at the minute are being used wisely with the COVID compassion I'm also doing a lot of e-learning so as you know, if you've been on my Instagram and Twitter, I've been sharing my e-learning stuff that I'm doing because I want to be prepared for the absolute worst as well. We sort of haven't been given any training or anything to do yet. So I've, I've took this off my own back and thought, you know what, what do I need to know that I don't know? I don't know anything about ventilating a patient. Not that I'll have to actually ventilate a patient because I'm not trained to do that. But if the time came to a point where I might have to manage a patient like that or manage the symptoms and things like that, I haven't got a clue. Um, I know about oxygen. I know about because we do obviously the life support at university on the wards have been shown oxygen, different masks and things like that. So I'm aware of those things, but I'm not aware of actual managing proper ventilation in a patient and the machines and things. I've got no clue. I've also, if you go on, sorry, e-learning for healthcare, if you've got an NHS email address, you can log in and sign up to all this e-learning. Sorry, I can't speak. It's amazing. The e-learning online is fantastic. I'll put the link below. So have a look. Try and register if you can. And yeah, so my other e-learning was all about COVID management in end of life and palliative patients because I might potentially be doing that. So I looked up that. I did e-learning about that, about managing the symptoms, um, managing fevers and, and the coughs and sputum and pain, all these sort of things that... I sort of kind of roughly knew because we sort of do those sort of things with end of life and palliative patients anyway in the community. When I did my community management placement, I sort of knew a bit about it, but it was really, really useful. It was so good to know. And I've wrote it all down so that if the time comes, at least I've got a bit more of guidance there as well. I mean, we're not going to be alone in this. I'm, I'm like the way I'm doing this, I'm thinking I'm going to, it's just going to be me. I'm going to be on my own. I'm going to have all these patients to deal with on my own and make decisions. But actually we're, we're in a team. I've got so many amazing nurses around me and doctors around me. None of us are alone in this. We're all in this together. We keep saying this. We keep hearing this on social media. Have you finished? <laughs> I wish I videoed that. That was hilarious. He was there like, I was like, have you finished? He went, and just stared at me. He's still glaring at me. Anyway.
my advice is to everybody else out there make the most of this time if you are a student nurse you're in self-isolation maybe if you've been if you've opted out and you're deferring things and things like that firstly massive well done to you for making that decision i think it's a brave amazing decision and if people are putting you down and making you feel guilty for it don't listen to that negativity it's not needed and i think you're amazing for making that decision and you absolutely have to make that decision for you for your family and what's best for all of you not just what's the best for a patient or the NHS, but you have to decide this for you and yourself. And I said this last week, and I'm going to say it again this week, we need nurses at the end of this. We need nurses for the future. So please think of it as that way and don't feel bad and don't make any, don't let anyone make you feel bad for that. So yes, and if you choose to opt in, amazing, well done. Thank you for joining and helping the COVID crisis and all of that jazz, but please also get support make sure you're safe use all of the proper ppe do not go into anything that you're not sure of it's all about competency at the end of the day um and you're well and well 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 within your rights to do that and keep yourself safe because it's not going to be any good to a patient if you're taken out of it so protect yourself as well as the patients guys come on anyway that was a bit of a rant i'm sorry i <laughs> didn't mean to do that but yes so if you're self-isolating, if you've choose, chosen to opt out, if you're at home, you've got kids around and you're really struggling with things to do, you don't know what to do, you don't know where to start, maybe your assignments have been put on hold, exams have been put on hold, whatever, um, take this time as an opportunity, like see this as a whole different situation, visualise what you need in your life. So think about okay what do I struggle with what am I not good at what am I what are my weaknesses and improve like you've got all this time at home like send your kids if you have a garden um send your kids or to the bedrooms or something like send them on a, a treasure hunt or something so that you can take the time out to do your work like get them occupied and just take the time to build on those weaknesses to practice 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 at home or even get them involved like if you've got a blood pressure that you really don't like doing manual blood pressures or you're not familiar with it or you're not good at it practice on your family like turn them all into patients practice <laughs> like what a perfect time to do this guys just use your time to do this. Do e-learning. Like I said, e-learning for healthcare is amazing. It's where I do all mine. Look at your modules online on your university websites. Have a look at assignment briefs and stuff like that. Because even though things have been put on hold, you can still do stuff. You can still refresh your brain. You can still do anatomy and physiology at home. You could even like set yourself up like, I know, this, this is a ridiculous idea for some people. Like some people are going to think, shut up, Claire. But do you know what? make a little tutorial session for your family like pretend you are the lecturer and you're going to teach your family a and p so pick um a cardiovascular system for example pick a system of the body sit there revise it learn it and then teach it to the rest and you know what that's really really going to help you remember as well for your exams and for the future for when you're actually dealing with patients and things like that and that's the way i learned as well so i would always sit down, I'd do all my revision, but then I would speak it out to someone and I'd teach somebody else. And that's the way I've always learned things. And it just, it really, really does help. So set up your little thing. And it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. It's only your family. They don't know that you've got it wrong. <laughs> Although to prevent that from happening, because we don't want you to make mistakes, maybe give them your flashcards and your information so that they can sort of test you along the way as well. That'd be really, really good, actually. Um, do little things like that, like anything that's going to help you and build you. Like now is the time to grow. Like this is a perfect opportunity. You've got nothing to do. You can't go out. You can't go to the restaurants. You can't go shopping. You can't go to buy a new pair of shoes. You could probably do it on Amazon. But use this time. Like you've got so many hours in a day now to grow, to build, to get all those weaknesses, overcome them and build them into strengths. And you're going to be an amazing nurse at the end of it. Like teach yourself at home, guys, do some homeschooling for yourself. It's going to be amazing. Like in my head, it's amazing. But I know that this is what I do because I didn't really get much. I got some things, but in my first year, especially of nursing, I didn't understand anything. They were talking at me at lectures about A&P and I was just like, how do you know this? How do you know this? I haven't got a clue. Like what? What is the skin? <laughs> 
okay I wasn't that bad but you, do you know what I'm saying um so I literally homeschooled myself I went on Khan Academy which I rave about all the time I'm sorry you're probably sick of it I googled everything I literally anything I didn't understand I word defined on google yeah so I homeschooled myself pretty much for the first year I say homeschooled I didn't really homeschool myself I was still at uni listening to the lectures and making notes and things like that but I literally had to go home and do the work myself again at home um, to help it sink in and help me remember and help me learn because I had no clue and it wasn't until second year I've said this before as well it wasn't until second year when I uh, things started to click in for me please don't feel like you don't know anything either but take this time as the opportunity to do this now is the perfect time guys or if you are that person that actually you are sick of nursing, you've opted out, you've decided staying at home is the best thing for you, you don't even want to look at an assignment, you've decided that's it for me, learn a new skill. Like again, you've got all these hours in the day to learn something new, to homeschool yourself on something else. Like pick something that you're really interested in. If you want to learn music, if you want to play the guitar, although if you haven't got a guitar, that's going to be awkward. Maybe not that one. Um, if you want to start singing, I don't know. If you want to start writing, oh my God, start writing. You could write books. You could write cartoons. You could write children's books. The world is literally your oyster in the palm of your hands. You can learn everything on YouTube now. You can learn so much online. Open University, for example, have so many free courses. Do them. The, this is amazing. Oh. I've got to go to work. <laughs> like, Guys, make the opportunity of this moment to be your best self, to do what you've always wanted to do. Just do it. Anyway, that's cheered me up. So thanks, guys. I know you're not really there and you're not speaking back to me, but I feel like you are. So thanks. <laughs> you've cheered me up, guys, for having that little moment. I had my little moment of crying and getting upset. And now I'm back on the positivity. Come on, we can do this, guys. And that's me. I'm going to shut up now. I'm really, really sorry. I sort of vented and talked a lot. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to go. See you later, guys. Keep safe. Stay at home. All that jazz. I know you're sick of hearing it. Just, yeah. And if anyone's, if anyone's suffering with their mental health, if they're struggling, please seek help, seek support, inbox me. My inbox is always open. I, nine times out of 10, always reply almost instantly, unless I'm busy and I'm at work or something like that. But I will always look at my phone in my lunch breaks, my coffee breaks, when I get home, before I start work. I will always look at every single inbox because I'm obsessed with checking every single inbox and getting rid of notifications. So I will have seen your notification. I will have read your notification. If I've ignored you, send me another message because I've clearly read it and then gone off to do something and then forgot about it. Um, but please, my inbox is always open if you're struggling. Get support, get the help that you need because it's needed more than ever right now. just wanted to show you a really useful tip if you're trying to avoid any form of coronavirus, COVID-19, spamming your um, feeds up on Twitter. This is a really, really useful tip that I used for Love Island, which you'll see now. Um, but if you go onto your Twitter, um, go here into settings and privacy, click that, and then you want to go into content preferences, click that, and then you will see blocked and muted you want to go don't look at my 68 blocked that's what happens when you be negative so um muted go to your muted and then it'll come up with muted accounts and muted words so you can mute people so they don't come up on your feed and you can mute words so if you look at my three muted words love island forever muted i never see any love islands come up on my feed anymore so if you are looking after your mental health you don't want to see all of the covid19 stuff you don't want to see the hashtags all of that you can mute it however if you, some people like i post things like positive messages but i also hashtag covid19 into it sometimes because i know it's trending because that's the the target audience that i want to see it those people that might be suffering so you, you have to sort of balance it, if that makes sense. But if you want to mute COVID-19 away from your life, away from your Twitter feed, that's exactly how to do it. Or if you want to mute me, for example, do it that way. Go for it. And I'm going to put some links below from the NHS about supporting your mental health as well at a time like this. So stay safe, guys. Bye.